Well, let's return to that constitutional court discussion now and the fact that the, uh, that the lawyers there for the Zondo Commission were asking judges to jail former President Jacob Zuma. Professor Tumi Musunyane back with us now. Professor, sorry about that bit of a glitch in the matrix. Um, so we have lawyers arguing that, President, that former President Jacob Zuma should go to jail. It's a big argument to make. They would have to have, bring a strong case. Yes, if in fact, uh, it's a big argument that, in fact, the judges were more, I think, interested in trying to dig deeper into the submissions by Nukai Tobi, primarily because we look at the nature of, you know, what is in front of us is that the Zondo Commission investigations of the state capture, in actual fact, uh, it has a specific time frame in which it needs to operate. It should have ended, in fact, in February 2020, but it has been extended. Now, for someone who refuses within that particular period of time to comply, requires the commissions to act with an agency in as far as trying to find, to set an example and a precedent to anyone who appears or likely to appear before it, that the law should be applied. The Constitution is the supreme law of this land, irrespective of whether one is a former president or not, needs to comply with it. And there's an order already that required him to do so. And he still fails to do that. So by giving him another option, in fact, it will be a fruitless and wasteful time for them to do that because he has already issued uh, a press release to say that he's not going to comply. He has been in prison before, so he's not afraid to do so. Um, does one follow the other? Let me explain what I mean. It would seem to me a pretty open and shut, I mean, almost as simple as a legal case gets. Was he in contempt or not? So I suppose, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but I suppose you would have to prove that the person concerned, in this case the former president, received the court order. I presume you could prove that. You could prove that he didn't arrive to testify. Well, you know that he didn't. And then just as a sort of added bonus, you have his public statement in which he promises to defy the constitutional court. But the hard part is the appropriate punishment. And here we would have to be guided by the law. The Constitutional Court says two years. The, com the Commission's Act, if I recall, going all the way back to 1947, talks about a fine and a period of six months. Does it necessarily follow that judges have to find that if he is guilty of contempt of court, he has to go to jail for two years? It does not necessarily, Steve says, that he could be imprisoned for that two years period. Because if you look at what uh, the Constitutional Court has been called to do is to enforce non-compliance with a court order that is issued in accordance with a statute. The statute in itself provides for six months, whereas the Constitutional, before the Constitutional Court now, the lawyers are requesting for two years. It will be interesting to see how the Constitutional Court uh, interpret and apply this one, because in essence, a six months as prescribed by that legislation in which the president is found to have been in defiance of, prescribed the six months period. However, there are, you know, uh, extenuating circumstances of which in this instance, the court will need to apply to say that in as much as the statute says six years, we are convinced enough of the submissions that has been made before us that we could still make it two years or we could still believe make it uh, 18 months uh, depending on the circumstances that they will consider. It does not necessarily say that he will be in prison for two years. The court will still have to make its own determinations between two years and the six months period. Um, a large part of this is in fact Zuma's statement or his foundation statement that he calls to be released, criticizing the commission, criticizing the constitutional court. I suppose that statement changes the game because it allows the Commission to say that he's insulted judges. So how important is this issue of judges being insulted? I mean, do judges really get to decide if they're being, if they're being insulted? That's one question. But a different question might be, do judges get to decide if the rule of law has been insulted? In fact, they, they do not have uh, the, the time to, you know, dwell into whether they've been insulted or not, but as to whether 
the office that they stand for has been indeed been insulted. For example, we all have freedom of expression to express our own views. Even the president also has his own views about whether he agrees with certain judgment or not. But the manner in which he attacks them is not necessarily attacks the judges, but the office, in fact, the independence of the judiciary. In actual fact, for example, Steve, he mentioned that uh, he had an issue with uh, Chief Justice Mukwen appointing Zondo. And we only come, you know, this surface now when there is an order that he needs to comply. When in actual fact that when he appointed Zondo, it was 2017, a long time ago when he appointed him. He had no issues with him. But now that now there is an order that requires him to do now, he finds it fit now to play a public, you know, in a public domain, you know, issues such as those ones that the, he had an issue with Mokwen changing the side and appointing uh, Zondo. So in actual fact, you will say that he seems to have an issue with attacking the judiciary as a whole, not necessarily individual judges, but the institutions that has issues and orders in accordance with the Constitution that he needs to comply with. But now, now because he doesn't agree on certain, certain judgment that has been issued against him, he finds it prudent to use that as an opportunity and play in a public forum, a platform, by the way, to, you know, to the mercy of the innocent, you know, lay, lay persons that may not be privy as to what actually happens before he appointed the Zondo Commission itself. Professor, I've got to tell you, I, as Stephen, can't imagine the former president going to jail for this. Can you? Do you think that could happen? If you look at uh, the remedies that exist before the court, in fact, the general decision of the Constitutional Court, it essentially says that, well, we have nothing to do or to say at this moment than to compare the presidents to comply with the summons issues and to file the affidavit. Well, he failed to do that. Now, if you give him a fine, it's not going to serve any purpose because we have seen how donations has been ushered to people like him when they are in trouble, when they require to you know that now the essence of it will be that to commit him to a non-alternative uh, I mean, term or a sentence that requires him to be in prison in actual fact without any alternative. That's what exactly the Zondo Commission legal representative are arguing for. Indeed, it's possible that he can be in prison. Professor, I really do appreciate the time. Thanks very much indeed. That's Professor Tumi Masanyane from Northwest University. Well.